It also happens in, in, in radioactive elements. They create positrons. Um, certain elements that have so-called beta decay um, give off positrons, anti-electrons. And, you know, an example of something that gives off positrons is potassium, like in the banana. Okay? So every banana you have, um, you know, I'll put these further away, I guess. Uh, every banana you have uh, has a certain amount of radioactivity to it. And so if I, if I watch this banana, it just, it's just streaming out of positrons are streaming out of this banana. Okay, so I, I, I don't put this up there for you to be afraid of bananas, but more to try to, and, and you also have potassium-40 in your body. As a matter of fact, for most people, the most radiation they will, they will uh, suffer through in their whole life comes from their own body. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Okay, and as I said, it's, it's part of evolution and we seem to have survived it. Uh, can we make antimatter? As I said, we do in accelerators all over the world, uh, including uh, SLAC, the accelerator at Stanford, uh, Triumph, the accelerator in, uh, in Vancouver, the LHC, Fermilab, et cetera, et cetera. So in the film, this antimatter is, is in this canister, which is filmed and, you know, it's the big, you know, it's, it's a typical thriller thing where the, the clock is ticking down and there's only so many seconds left. And, um, it's, so, it's suspended in this vacuum. And the, the question is, so why? Why go to all that trouble? I mean, uh, why not just, you know, carry it on the plane and, you know, just stick it in the, vacuum, the Vatican anywhere? Well, I would, I would argue that, that we already know why, and we just have to go back to that. If I looked at that picture, I said that I had a, I had a, a, a photon light coming in from the, from the right, creating antimatter matter. I could equally, all the laws of physics are symmetric under time. In other words, they're, they're the same whether you flip time backwards or forwards. I could equally look at that picture and say I have an electron and a positron come together and they annihilate into pure energy. Again, E equals mc squared. And so, we would think, as I said, all of our laws of physics are, are symmetric. In other words, they're the same for the antimatter side as the matter side. Okay? So an anti Tom Hanks would look very, I mean, actually, even this doesn't do it. He would look exactly the same, actually. Okay? I mean, you know, here they put different coloring to make him look sort of evil on the anti side. But, <laughs> um, but if Tom and his anti Tom were to meet, uh, that would not be good. Uh, <laughs> And again, E equals mc squared. That's, that's, that's the key point. The point is I've converted, in this case, I've converted mass to energy. And, and our world is a constant fluctuation of going back and forth, energy to mass, mass to energy, energy to mass. Okay. Um, is this annihilation necessarily a bad thing? Uh, it's certainly a bad thing on the subatomic talk show here, where uh, um, the, the Mu Maison show, uh, where Matt and his long-lost brother, Anti-Matt, meet. And of course, you know, you don't want to be there the next second when they actually hug because that's the end of the show. Um, but in fact, we use, we use matter, antimatter annihilation in medical imaging. If I take something that has, say, for example, potassium-40, and I put it in the blood, and I put it in the brain, for example, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to emit this positron, and the positron is going to very quickly, because since we're basically made up of electrons and protons, it's going to very quickly find an electron, and it's going to annihilate. So this is the, this is the basic process. Okay? It's going to annihilate to two gamma rays. These two photons, these two light rays we call gamma rays. Okay? So that's E equals mc squared. So that's the basic idea of a PET scanner. I don't know if anybody's had a PET scan, but you know, I'm not sure how many people are aware of the fact that P in PET stands for positron, as an anti-electron. Okay? So we're using antimatter to do medical imaging. And here's the idea. You, 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 as I said, you put it some, some radioactive source in a person's brain. Uh, usually you inject it, in, in, and so they have it in the blood. 
and then it annihilates, giving off these photons, and we have these, these, these gamma ray detectors that we just detect all these photons, and we image that part of the brain where this is happening. Okay? So the idea being that you know, antimatter is not necessarily uh, you know, a bad thing. We, we, and even more important, it, it, it's from the, the, the years of study of it to understand it that allows for something like a PET scan. Um, to go back to angels and demons, the, in, in the movie, they had a quarter gram of antimatter. Now, that doesn't sound like a whole lot. Uh, a quarter gram is the equivalent of 11 grains of rice, and I got, I got this 11 grains of rice from my colleague from Berkeley, and I just, I just actually today counted them. There's actually 10 there. Um, so, okay, 11 or 10 grains of rice um, is about a quarter gram of, of matter, okay? So if you had a 11 anti-grains, um, when you, when you do the calculation of what E that is, it is equivalent of something on the order of five to 10 kilotons. So it is, it is equivalent to a nuclear explosion, okay? So, I mean, that science is actually correct in the movie in the sense of that amount of antimatter really is a problem. Um, and again, I got this from my colleague from, I just thought it was kind of a neat movie. This is St. This is Peter's Square in the Vatican. And we're, we're zooming out, and then kaboom, the explosion happens, and that's how much the area of, of Rome and the Vatican City would be destroyed by that. Okay? So, you no, know, it's, a, it's a, if it was possible, it'd be a serious thing. And, and luckily for us, it's not possible. Um, we, although we, even at Fermilab, which is a proton anti proton collider, the amount of anti protons we make is two nanograms, two billionths of a gram a year. And that's using a lot of energy to make those two billionths of a gram. Okay. So to make my quarter gram bomb, which is the equivalent of a nuclear bomb, would take 100 million years. Okay. So it's, it's, it's really something, you know, if, if you're gonna, if your takeaway message is don't be afraid of an antimatter bomb, okay? Um, unfortunately, it's also really probably not useful for an energy source. It's a, it's a beautifully clean energy source, if, if you could have it, but unfortunately it, it's, just, it's just not in the, in the books to, to use it. And the reason being is t it takes far more energy to make the sample of antimatter than you'll ever get out of it. Okay, okay fine. Also in Angel and Demons, they, they, have, they have it suspended in this, in, this, in this, what does she say? She, she goes, in the electromagnetic trap or whatever she says. Um, it's in a bottle, and, and of course the, the main thing is we have to make sure that the, it doesn't hit the walls of the bottle because, as we've just discussed, it'll annihilate, okay? So we, that is what we are doing, uh, myself and, um, as I said, uh, a bunch of collaborators from, from across Canada and, and, and across the U.S. and Brazil and the United States and, and, uh, and the U.K. Um, are trying to make anti-hydrogen, an anti-proton and an anti-electron, and make the equivalent of hydrogen, but the anti-version. And, but we can't just make it and say, oh, you know, hallelujah. We have to make sure that we trap it in a bottle, because otherwise, if it hits the walls, it'll just annihilate. And of course, we can't do much with it.